in the cheapest spotlight tonight, one of the cheapest, probably the cheapest automotive multimeters you will ever find. And I got this baby off of Amazon. Oh yeah. A lot of times I'm hearing, Darren, Darren, what is a good cheap automotive multimeter? And that's a loaded question because really there's not that many choices out there. End of day, this is the cheapest I've come across. Only, <laughs> oh my God, I love it. $15 Canadian, about 12 bucks US. Got me an automotive melt multimeter and, uh, with the carrying case is absolutely insane. And not only is the price insane, but this meter has a ton of functionality. Oh yeah, here we go. Infrarider, the YF90K, man, oh man, oh man. What do you get? Well, you get a case. You actually get a carrying case for 12 bucks US, 15 Canadian, a freaking carrying case. Dog gamut, I'm in love. Also get a thermocouple and a pretty decent one too. Got that nice long metal probe because it does do temperature in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. And man, this just keeps getting better. Get a USB dongle because you can connect this to your PC with some software. And lo and behold, you've got, you've got some multimeter that does some graphing and everything else. Oh, there's the mini CD. We'll have a quick look at that as well. And of course we get our digital automotive analyzer, multimeter manual. And this is all in English. And it goes into detail because it's an automotive multimeter. It does pulse width. Um, RPM, the whole nine yards, incredible. Good size meter, not too big, not too small. Um, just a tad bigger than that UT60S we just reviewed. And if you didn't check out that Unity Week extravaganza, check it out. That was a lot of fun, a lot of great stuff from Unity. And right beside that Zotac ZT980, yeah, just a tad smaller, but all in all, good size meter. Has a pretty nice Huey Bluey going on as well. Um, kind of a little bit darker than that Rich Meter sort of blue. I like it. I like it. Um, generally speaking, it's, uh, you know, it's decent. Now, truth be told, when I got this, it was a teeny bit wonky. What I mean by wonky? Well, when I turned it on, it was just beeping a lot. And it does beep, but it was beeping, beeping more than it should have. I took it apart, cleaned it with some isopropyl alcohol and uh, put it back together. I put a bit of dielectric on the range selector switch and five minutes later, this baby is ready to rock and roll. That's all it took, just a little bit of cleaning. There was just a bit too much grease, probably the cheapy grease they used on that selector. And it was just causing some, you know, I'll call it a misfire, but hey, it's fine now. So yeah. Those test leads rated at Cat3, 1000 volt, 20 amp. And uh, man, these suckers are long, really long test leads, which is perfect because that's an automotive multimeter, right? So it's gonna be needing that extra length when you're poking around the engine. So excellent. On the subject of poking around, let's poke it into our precision reference voltage standard. 5.000 is what we're looking for. 5.003 is what we get. Good stuff. Spec wise, yeah, not one of the most accurate. A uh, plus or minus 1.5% uh, of the reading plus or minus five digits. So yeah, anything precision, not gonna wanna use this multimeter really in a low volts or, well, you know, anything for that matter. But hey, it's not a motive multimeter, right? And it's in spec. By the way, you probably noticed that beautiful backlight. It's got that luminescent green. Uh, I like to call it the Chernobyl <laughs> look. Um, it works for me. One of my favorite, actually. Um, very easy on the eyes. And it stays on until you decide to turn it off. Oh, yeah. By the way, the test leads on this meter, you really got to give it a good push to get them in there all the way. They're really long, really long. So push it in till it basically snaps and then you are good to go. And man, those are not going anywhere. And speaking of selector switch, oh man, nice. Clickety click, clackety clack. No worry about stopping in between ranges. No, gets them with authority. You do have that annoying beep, which you just can't disable, but very good tactile feel. 
You probably noticed that big hump on the top of the meter. That's for that USB out. So two Phillips screws, pull it out, and there you go. Easy breezy access to your USB cable. So we have a 20 amp high current input. Below that we have our microamp milliamp, 800 milliamps maximum fused. So pretty high for a milliamp uh, rating. Below that we have our common or ground. And of course at the top we have our RPM dwell continuity diode resistance, uh, frequency, capacitance, and voltage. Now there's a big faux pas. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Neither should you be. Look at that. I mean, all those inputs are the same. No color coding. They're all black. Gull, dang it. We're missing our red. Safety hazard. Take a closer look at the selector switch starting at the 9 o'clock or off position. Volts DC up to 1,000 volts. Resistance. Continuity. Capacitance and diode. RPM. Dwell. As well as pulse. Frequency and duty cycle. Dual temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit. Microamps, ACDC. Milliamps, ACDC. Finally, high current amps, ACDC. Quick diode test now, LED diode, starting off with that uh, standard diode. Here we go. And do we have a forward voltage drop? Yes, we do. Over to the red LED, it is lit. With a forward voltage drop. Over to the yellow, it is lit with a forward voltage drop. Over to the green, lit but no forward voltage blue and the same for the white so five out of five in terms of illumination two to five in terms of giving us that forward voltage drop you might have noticed my led tester has changed uh, my uh, super uber duper one is undergoing some maintenance right now so should be back soon output voltage in dial mode a solid 3.222 volts continuity is next standard stock test leads i do nothing with my stock leads i don't sand them i don't clean them I do nothing they are like they come here we go three two one wow that is loud latched and pretty darn quick let's try the probe masters probe masters oh yeah maybe latches a millisecond quicker uh basically just as loud good stuff and that is freaking loud 88.9 decibels maximum output in continuity. Another solid function is the fact that for temperature it comes in both Celsius and Fahrenheit and it has an ambient sensor on board so you don't need to use that thermocouple if you don't want to. 69 degrees Celsius, ah, Fahrenheit rather. Hit the function switch and it brings us to Celsius mode. 20.6. Excellente. 5.85 amps right now in high current mode. Let's just bring it up see if we have a high current alarm. And we do so as soon as we hit that 10 amp threshold, we have that high current alarm. Good stuff. Now in milliamp mode, remember we have an 800 milliamp maximum fused according to the front of the meter. Let's just see if that's true or not. So it doesn't look like it's gonna go that long. Sitting at 600, just under 600 milliamps, it's okay, but as soon as we cross that 600 milliamp mark, but a boom, we are over range. So actually 600 milliamps, not 800, is the maximum threshold. But you do have room for error with that 800 milliamp fuse. Good stuff. And just in case you're wondering, this is powered by one nine volt battery. We have two threaded inserts as well. Easy access. No access to the fuses though. You want to get those fuses out, you got to take off four Phillips screws. And I'm telling you, it's not threaded either. So, oh, that's going to wear out over time. By the way, that tilt stand is definitely a little wonky. It's a little wonky. What do we mean by wonky? Well, it's not a full fledged tilt stand. It's kind of like a half, half stand. I don't know. And you, you got to pull when it's in there tight. It's, it's a pain to get out. So, uh, not the greatest implementation. No. Just for giggles, check that out compared to that Unity tilt, tilt stand. Whoa, nobody does it better than Unity as far as I'm concerned when it comes to tilt stands. 
By the way, some of the features on this meter require uh, an add-on, an inductive pickup. Um, you can get this third party. I believe the HP 705A is one of them. This is basically a rebranded hold peak, let's face it, uh, an automatic inductive clamp kit. Uh, that will get you into your RPM signal pickups and uh, spark plug the whole nine yards. So if you're gonna do automotive with this meter, you definitely want to get that attachment. Okay, right now we have the battery uh, hooked up to the Inferider YF90K and we are sitting here uh, quietly. The motor's not turned on when we're sitting at 12.4 volts. Tells us that that battery is good. Now what I'm gonna do is put this on max min and I'm going to start the engine and we'll see what the maximum and minimum voltage is with that battery. And 14.5 was the maximum output when that motor was cranked. And the minimum was 12.4 volts. So that tells me that we've got a really good battery here. Uh, it's definitely not dipping below the dangerous level, telling me that this battery has a lot of life left in it. As well it should, it's basically brand new, so excellent. A lot of these other automotive features here, such as Dwell and Pulse, requires access to uh, some of the fuel injectors and whatnot that I'm just not gonna go into at this point. But you do have a lot of functionality here. Already after Aphrodite, it is teardown time. Here we go. Starting off with those input jacks. Yep, split variety. Hey, wasn't expecting anything really better at this price point, that's for sure. Fuses are interesting though. These are uh, ceramic fuses, six by 30. And uh, yeah, the high current is a 20 amp, 500 volt. The low current, 800 milliamp, 500 volt. And indeed those are properly rated fuses. Good to see. Nice big long honking current shunt over here. And check out one, two PTCs and two mobs. So they're thinking about some input protection. We've got a diode clamp over here as well. Good stuff. Not a new meter by any means. Look at that rendition. Last updated December 31st, 2014. So about 2015 if you really want to be serious about it. But still we're talking about eight year old PCB technology. See, Blah! Still, we're talking about eight-year-old uh, technology here on the PCB, but hey, multimeters age very well, or haven't you noticed? At the top of the meter here, that's her LCD display driver. That's the Holtec 1621B 48-pin um, LQFP package. Nice stuff. Beside the USB port at the top here, I know it's not optically isolated. What can I say? We're talking 2014. Um, this is the USB to serial bridge controller, PL233, sorry, the 233HX. Uh, has built-in Windows 7 and Windows 8 driver support fabricated back in March of 2013. Now that is a problem because most people today are running Windows 7, Windows 7, Windows 10 and Windows 11 machines. So if you've got Windows 7, Windows 8 native driver support on board, it doesn't necessarily help. Um, you might have some issues compatibility-wise when you're installing that software, so you might have to go into compatibility mode. Uh, being I see over here, being cheeky, just hiding off camera. Come on, DTA 0661L, uh, an oldie but a goodie. That's the multimeter I see. And the brains are right over there. There's the T24C02 AEP ROM, fitting all of that good stuff to the being I see. And finally over here, this is our enhanced microcontroller ADC, the SinoWealth SH79F6431P. Analog to digital conversion going on. Little peeky boo of the USB. Okay, doing the old flipperoo. Here we go. And oh yeah, there goes all the screws. No other protection whatsoever on this side of the PCB. We do have some pretty decent looking tracks though, I have That's to say, amazing. me putting on, because if you recall what I said in the beginning, uh, yeah, this was a mess, a mess. Had grease all over the damn thing. And I cleaned it off with uh, uh, alcohol and a uh, nice clean start give just a little bit of dielectric because a little goes a long way on the rotary tracks and man it performed 110 percent better there's the uh touch pads for the soft touch buttons and uh, over here we have the soldering job for that see and still we got some flux and what have you going on here so they definitely could have done a better job in terms of finishing up but uh hey you know once again, 15 bucks, I'm not complaining. Those input jacks for the most part are soldered on there pretty well. Uh, maybe one or two are a little, little iffy, but generally speaking, not, not so bad. 
Now let's take a look here as well. We've got one, two, three, four, five pads, nice soft touch buttons. And once again, we do have a nice mechanism here. Now this is a spring and ball movement. It is recessed in that rotary selector, but it is the spring and balls. So you have that nice tactile feel and that nice clickety click. There's the zebra pad, the elastomar for the display. All in all, not too bad. And yeah, in case you're wondering, no, there was no shielding. Well, unfortunately, that PC software was a no-fly zone. Now, I couldn't get it to work with the Windows 11 at all. I tried everything. Spent a lot of time on this, actually. Just didn't work. Oh, man, it was so aggravating. Yeah, the software installed A-OK, -okay, but that was it. When it actually came time to talk to the multimeter, nothing. Now, I tried everything. I'm telling you, like, picture's worth a thousand words, right? Ugh. Closing thoughts on the Infrarider. YF90K. Yeah, it's a deal. It's a steal of a deal. If you can find it, this thing comes and goes on Amazon like you would not believe. Uh, one day I see it for sale, the next day I don't. Take your time. Patience is a virtue in this case, and you will find it eventually at a steal of a deal. Definitely irks me that we couldn't get that software to install. Well, no, that's not true. It installed, but it didn't do anything. It was just a dead air. Tried everything, man, oh man. I even tried different uh, third-party software. It could not get anything to talk to this Infurider. How infuriating! A lot of functionality for next to nothing. RPM, dwell, you name it. If you're gonna do serious automotive testing with this though, get that inductance coupler add-on. It will make a huge difference. Really nothing negative to say about this meter. It is so darn cheap. Uh, bakers can't be choosers. And I think I'd be picking at straws. This thing is a steal if you can find it. So if you're in the market for a cheapo automotive multimeter, look no further than the Infrarider YF90K. The Infrarider YF90K gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Oh man, that always on backlight is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. To the next one, keep on testing.